My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 110. Day, day 3110, 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition day 110, we are on the topic of probability and today is our 10th lesson on the topic in the series of 15. Today we'll do problem number 12, problem number 12 that you find on page number 321. Open your book, turn to page 321 and read the problem yourself. It says that we have a box, we have a box that contains 10 parts, two of which, two of which we are told are defective. The question simply is, if one part is chosen at random, what are the odds that the part that is chosen is not defective? Is not defective. We're looking for, we're looking for the probability, probability of having chosen a non-defective part, a non-defective part. Probability of choosing a non-defective part, obviously, is simply one minus the probability that we pick, choose a defective part. Now, what are the odds of choosing a defective part? Well. We have two defective parts. We have two defective parts out of a total of ten. That's all it is. It's very simple. There are not there are two defective parts, which means there must be eight non-defective parts out of ten. So it's eight out of ten. Let's do second one. Part B. This was too simple. Part B says that part B says that here we'll choose two parts. Two parts, two parts are chosen at random. What are the odds that the two parts are chosen? It says two parts are chosen at random. And the important part here is that because we are choosing two parts, because we are choosing two parts one after the other, we must, the problem must tell us whether the first part that we chose is going to be put back in the box or whether we are going to leave it out. In other words, are the two parts being chosen with replacement? We are going to pick one part, see whether or not it is defective and put it back in the box or leave it outside. Here it says, you must leave it outside. Two parts are chosen at random without replacement. Two parts are chosen at random without replacement. What are the odds that, that the parts chosen, the parts chosen are both defective? We are choosing two parts. What are the odds that out of 10 parts that, uh, that the box contains and we know that two of them are defective, what are the odds that if I were to choose two parts at random one after the other without replacement that I'm going to end up both parts being defective? Well, let's find out. Well, the odds of choosing the first part, first defective part that is, the odds of choosing first defective part, we just did it a second ago, there are two defective parts out of 10, so that was very simple. And because we are not replacing it, we are not going to put it back in the box, having chosen a defective parts in the first row, we are not going to put it back in the box, so what are the odds now, what are the odds now of choosing the second defective part? Well, we chose the first part, the first defective part, first part that we chose was defective, we noticed that it is defective and we did not put it back. So now how many defective parts are there left in the box? Well, there were two to begin with. One is already chosen. So there is only one defective part left in the box. Out of how many parts? Out of nine parts because one was already chosen. How do we write it? This is how it is written. So this is how it, therefore the probability of choosing a defective part on the first row, D stands for defective part. This, this D tells us the part is defective and the subscript 1 tells us the first draw. First draw. And what are the odds that we choose a defective part in the first draw and a defective part on the second draw? This is how we write it. And that is simply equal to the odds of choosing the defective parts in the first row times the odds of choosing the defective parts on the second row given the fact that the defective parts were chosen on the first row. And this is what is known as conditional probability. 
it is called conditional probability because it's conditional upon the fact that the first part that was drawn was defective. D stands for defective right here and subscript 1 tells us which draw it is, first draw or second draw. So here, what are the odds on the second draw? See, second draw is written first here. What are the odds of choosing a defective part on the second draw given the fact that on the first draw, on the first draw, we chose a defective part? What are the odds of choosing a defective part on the second row, given the fact that a defective part was chosen on the first row? Well, we already have the work right here. The odds of choosing a defective part on the first row was 2 out of 10, and because we are doing it without replacement, there was only one defective part left on, by the time we made a second row out of a total of 9 parts. And that's all there is. That's all there is. I don't think we can do much simplification here. It's just going to be, well, we can simplify this thing by 5, 4 times 9 is 45, so it's just 1 out of 45. 1 out of 45, a little less than 2% chance. A little less than 2% chance. Why a little less than 2% chance? Because it's 1 out of 45, we know that 1 out of 50 is exactly 2%. Oh, it should be a little more than, not less than, because we're dividing it by a smaller number. What the hell is wrong with me? A little more than, uh, a little more, little more than 2% chance. Not a lot, a little more than 2% chance because instead of dividing 50, they're dividing it by 45. But not, not very likely, not very likely that we're going to end up, not very likely that we choose two parts are in the from the box out of a total of 10 parts where two of them happen to be defective. Not very likely that the two that we draw, they happen to be both defective. 98 there is about 98% chance that that will not be the case. That at least at least one of them is going to be a good one, or maybe they are both good ones. Let's do one more. This is problem number 12. This problem that we that we just did is problem number 12. This next problem that we're going to do is not in the book. Let's call it 12B. It's not in the book, so don't try to look for it. Here's, here's the problem. And tell you what, this time, this time to make it interesting, after I finish writing the problem on the blackboard, why don't you pause the video and do it yourself first, okay? Here it is. It says, it says, two cards are drawn from a deck of cards. And we all know the deck of cards contains 52 cards because there are 13 cards in each suit. There are four suits. Two cards that we're going to draw, again, this time also we're going to draw them without replacement. Without replacement. Question is, what are the odds of drawing a pair? What are the odds of drawing a pair? In other words, there are four suits as we know. Let's, let's erase this thing. Let's erase this thing. And let me allow me to just put my artistic ability at display. We, have, we know we have four suits. I'm just going to do the best as I can. This is this is what the spade looks like. Not that we need to know here. Do you understand? I'm just doing it just for the hell of it. Something like this is what we call club. Then we have the diamond. So th these are the black ones, and then we have red ones, we have diamonds. And then finally we have something that looks like this, which is the heart. There are four suits. I don't know why I'd, I'd, I, have, I have no idea why I saw the need to do that. It has nothing to do with the problem. Well, it has something to do with the problem, but not too much. So here's the question again, one more time. We're going to draw two cards at random from the deck of cards without replacement. The question is, uh, what are the odds that we can end up drawing a pair? Now I remember why I did this. So drawing a pair simply means that we draw a three of spade and a three of club, or seven of club and a seven of hearts, or a queen of diamond and a, and a queen of spade. You get the idea. Two queens, two aces, two sevens, two three, whatever. What are the odds that we can end up drawing a pair if I'm going to draw two cards at random without replacement? I'm going to give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself first and then compare your work 
against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time, okay? Well, let's pick two cards, shall we? So as I said before, these are usually red ones. Well, not usually. These are the red ones. Red suits, hearts and the diamonds. And those are black ones. Let's pick two cards, shall we? Which two cards should we pick? Let's pick We want to pick a pair, you see when we want to pick a pair, which pair should we pick? Should we pick two sevens or two nines or two tens? Nah. Let's have some fun. We're not gonna pick something lousy, let's pick two aces. Okay? So here, here's how we write it. So the odds of choosing the ace on the first try, the subscript tells us which draw it is, is the first draw. And the ace, odds of picking an ace on the second row. Again, the subscript of 2 tells us the second row. And that has to equal to the odds of picking the ace on the first row times the odds of choosing an ace on the second row given the fact that the ace was chosen on the first row. So the second part is the conditional probability. It is conditional upon the fact the odds of choosing a second ace is conditional upon the fact that the ace was chosen on the first row because we need a pair. And that's how we write it. What are the odds of choosing the ace on the first row? That's the easy part. How many aces are there? There are four aces because there are four, four suits. And how many cards? There are 13 cards in each suit. So it's 13 times 4 because there are 13 cards in each suit. 52 cards. This is where the things get a little tricky. Because we are doing it without replacement and we are choosing two aces, we have already chosen ace in the first row. How do we know that the ace is chosen in the first row? Because it says so right here. This is the probability of choosing the ace in the second row given the fact this line tells us this is this is the conditional probability. This is it is conditional upon the fact given the fact that an ace was chosen on the first row. Well if, if ace was chosen in the first row and it was not replaced in the suit. Now the suit only has 51 cards. And how many aces? Only three aces because one was already chosen in the first row. So this, uh, this is the probability of choosing a pair of ace. What's the probability of choosing two queens? Well, the exact same thing. Instead of ace, it's going to be queen. What are the odds of choosing two sevens? Same thing. Instead of A's, we'll have seven, 7 on the first row, second, 7 on the second row, 7 on the first row, and 7 on the second row, and so on and so forth. Nothing will change. In other words, we get 13 different chances. We get 13 different chances. Such chances. This is one chance that we have. One chance of drawing a pair, a pair of aces. Then another chance of drawing a queen. Because it doesn't matter what we pick. We just want to. We, we just want a pair. The question doesn't say what are the odds of drawing a what are the odds of drawing a pair of A's? In which case the answer is this. What are the odds of drawing two tens? Well that's, that's this. It just says a pair, any pair would do. Let's continue on the top. So there are 13 such pairs. So this part you can continue up here and there are 13 such pairs. Therefore, therefore, the odds of drawing a pair, therefore, the odds of drawing a pair is simply this quantity that you see. So as a matter of fact, why rewrite everything? Therefore, the odds of drawing a pair, so now I'm going to erase this thing, we're going to continue here. Therefore, the odds of drawing a pair is what you see here, which is the art of drawing one particular pair, and there are 13 such pairs. Well, let's put this in a different color so that we have a little drama going on here. 
there are 13 such pairs. And there is your answer. And what you see here, what we see here, that this 13 goes, goes out with that 13, and this 4 is going to go out with that 4, the odds are just 3 out of 51. Odds are just 3 out of 51, or about 6%. About 6%. And just a little under 6% because 3 out of 50 would have been exactly 6%. There's about a 6% chance that if you were to draw two cards at random from a deck without replacement, did I say 2%? Chance? I meant to say 6% chance. There's a 6% chance that if you were to draw two cards at random from a deck without replacing it, replacing them, that you can end up that you can end up drawing a pair, any pair, some pair. There's a 6% 6, 6, 6 chance of such an event. See you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.